Hi, welcome to another episode of Quick Flicks brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment. My name's Norm. Hey, we're going to look again at uh, the Performance 4 Barrel line and continuing with the Holly thing for a while here. Today we're going to look at the main circuit. Okay, so main metering. Um, let's talk about dialing in your main metering before we look at the theory. I think that if we just lay some groundwork with dialing in the main system, the main circuit, uh, you'll have a better understanding and a better feel when we start looking at theory, okay? Uh, the main is controlled by jets. Uh, there, there are bleeds that you can work with, uh, but I'm not going to go there, okay? We're going to work with jets. Uh, and in this case, in this level, four barrel, uh, that's what Holly had in mind anyways, okay? So off of jet sizes, I'm going to dial in my primary side, my primary jets, by finding a place where I can cruise down the road at steady state, it could be 35, 40, 47 miles per hour, whatever, where I'm just tipping into throttle position, okay? So at this point, my throttle blades are not closed, they're not wide open throttle, but they're somewhere in between, okay? And I'm finding a place where I can do this at steady state and maintain a few moments uh, in that RPM, in that mile per hour. Okay, so I want to dial in my primary jets by finding that jet size that allows me to go through steady state uh, with no surge, okay? If I'm surging at 45 miles per hour or 42 miles per hour and, and the motors, I can tell it needs more fuel, that's, chances are all things being equal and being sure that we have fuel delivery, okay, which we should have done already, uh, it's gonna be jet size. So I'm gonna bring my jet size up and probably make a two or three jet size change at a time when I change my jet size. Here's our idle mixture screws we talked about before. There is the, you can see here, this would be where it, the idle mixture screw pulls off of the main well, this little casting here. Uh, the, one of these, in fact, this is probably emulsion tube in here, one of these tubes. And then uh, our main jets, the power, valve. power valve, which we're gonna assume is shut for today. And um, our full-time manifold vacuum on the base plate and then a ported or tuned vacuum uh, always above the base plate and in this case it's on the metering block. Also, I'm going to take a vacuum gauge for a ride, okay? Now to do that I'm probably going to go to the store buy an extra long length of you know four foot six foot vacuum gauge and hook it up to my vacuum gauge, hook it up to my full time vacuum port, uh, not the one on the uh, side of my primary metering block, but the one that's off of the base plate, as we talked about last time, so that I get full engine vacuum, and I'm, and I'm gonna bring my vacuum gauge inside with me. Hopefully I'm gonna have someone along with me on the ride that can watch the gauge as I'm going through steady state uh, driving. You know, you can glance at it, but I'm gonna try and watch the road and pay attention to my pedal. So I'm gonna keep jetting upward on my primary side until I reach the maximum vacuum again, kind of like what we did with our idle circuit. So as we come up, uh, and my vacuum readings are increasing and increasing, and I'm going up you know, two or three jet sizes each time, I will reach a point to where my reading will start to fall off, or it'll just suddenly take the dive downward. At that point, I know that I can't go any larger on my jet size, and I wanna go back to the jet side I had in previously and use that for my, my primary jet size. On the secondary th side of things, to start with an initial tune, wherever I ended up on my primary side, I would probably move into a jet size that was four, five, or six sizes larger than my primary side. To dial in the primary side, uh, it's a good idea to have a place where you can, uh, can open up to wide open throttle or, or at least transition beyond steady state, okay? Because you wanna start pulling from the secondaries to dial those in. Ideally, you'd have a track day and you would pull the, uh, pull the secondaries open often on the track. Uh, and in doing so, 
Uh, I would dial in the secondaries and keep going up in size on secondary jets until my mile per hour fell off. At that point, I would look to see uh, if I had moved beyond a five or six size, maybe seven size jet change window compared to my primary side. If, I, if I'm up 10 sizes on my secondary side compared to my primary, I would probably bring my primary up one or two jet sizes and go back down the track and see if my mile per hour is still down or if it has started to pick up again. If it's picking up, I might come up one or two jet sizes on the primary again until I get back into that balance of having a uh, five, six, seven size change or differential between the primary jet size and my secondary jet size, okay? So pretty easy to dial in. Uh, th there's gonna be more specific tuning that we'll look at as we start considering a power tuning episode on for f Holly four barrels. But this is good information to get you started and, and at least out of the box into a tuning situation for your main circuit, okay? So let's talk about theory. Okay, so let's talk about some main circuit theory, okay? Uh, I want you to consider though that, that the main circuit is controlled primarily by jet size. So let's look at that for just a moment. Jets are based upon flow and I just used an example of a 72, okay? A 72 would actually be 72 cubic centimeters or cc's per minute. Now, as I said, it's based upon flow. That's not just based upon the hole or the orifice in the jet. Holly has a, a, a method, a machine, if you will, to determine the flow rating, not just the size of the hole, okay? So drilling does no good. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's true. Uh, soldering and redrilling does no good. Okay, you change the, 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 you change the entry into the hole, you change the entry out of the hole. You've just changed the flow, okay? I mean, basically we're gonna come right here. The same thing is going on with a jet, okay? Flow in, flow out is not just based upon the orifice diameter, okay? So don't drill jets. While I'm doing the don't thing, I'll also say at this level, don't mess with your bleeds uh, and, and, and drill your bleeds and change the bleed sizes uh, at this level of performance, okay? You're just asking for trouble. Okay, so let's look at some theory, all right? So Giovanni Venturi, okay? Uh, you know, 100 years ago, a couple hundred years ago, whatever, Mr. Venturi came up with the idea of a Venturi, okay? So a Venturi is basically just an area of, uh, of, of a place where fluid dynamics can occur, okay? So as fluid, like air, uh, moves past a wide opening and comes into an area, a narrow region, uh, and then opens back up to a larger region again, uh, is basically you're talking about a venturi, okay? So at the top, let's say, at, at the top of my, uh, of the one of the barrels on my four barrel, at the top of my venturi of one of my four barrels, I have a relatively large area. The air is entering, okay? As the air enters and, and starts to bottleneck and taper down, I go from an area of high pressure and low volume to an area of high pressure and low, or pardon me, high volume and low pressure. It flips. And as I get past this region, uh, I start to move back into an area of high pressure and low volume once again, okay? Carburetors, along with other things in this world, but carburetors particularly, because that's what we're talking about, are basically based upon this one principle. Okay, it, it, uses, it uses all of these gradients, all these high pressure, low pressure areas to its advantage to, to fulfill the necessity of all of its circuits. This is basically has nothing more to do with other than the fact that you've got a, a high pressure, a low pressure, and a high pressure underneath. Which one do I want to work with and which one will satisfy uh, the demands of a circuit that I'm trying to dial in, okay? Think about this for just a moment. Just for giggles, uh, here's my booster, okay, where my, my fuel comes out in the annulus. And, uh, you know, some manufacturers have an idea of putting this at different locations in the airstream so that it picks up a different type of signal quality. Sometimes you want a signal that is uh, more high pressure and low volume Sometimes you want a signal that's more high volume and low pressure, and sometimes you want a, a, a return side or the back side and start dipping into a high pressure or moderate pressure with a low to moderate volume, okay? 
So they do a lot of things with Venturi uh, tuning and where the booster location is in the Venturi. Okay, so let's look at my other drawing, okay? So I have a primary bowl, I have a primary Venturi, and uh, let's just take a look and kind of, hopefully you can get on board with me here, okay? So primary bowl, I got my float, it's out here on its hinge, its arm is up there with my needle and seat, the, the fuel level is going on, it's all good, we've already dialed that in previously. My power valve off of my main metering block is going to remain closed for today's discussion. So power valve PV closed, and then I'm feeding my main well, as I said earlier, by my jet down here uh, at the bottom. Here's my jet, jet extension. Here's my jet, regular jets on the, the metering block. I'm feeding my, feeding my main well, main well here on the block through the jets, okay? Now, in this, adjacent to this main well or behind it, depending on the metering block, is a place or a thing called an emulsion tube, okay? Now, bear with me just a second here. Imagine with me for a moment that I'm sitting here on my idle circuit. So my throttle blade is closed, okay? There's no big volume of air passing my booster. So it's not picking up a signal. The, my Venturi thing is basically dead at this point, okay? All of a sudden, mechanically, on my throttle linkage, I kick it, and my throttle plate opens, okay? Now, I have an, a, a, a microsecond of where it's air only, but I, it's just a moment or microsecond later that I'm starting to pick up signal, and then I soon, microsecond later, will have air and fuel down my throttle bore, okay? Now, how all this happens, <clears throat> if you think about the pressure gradient with our Venturi, okay, let's see, my, my fuel is stationary or static, let's say, in the bowl. How do I make fuel climb a ladder, if you will, or climb an emulsion tube? It has to be through pressure, a pressure gradient, okay? So as I crack my throttle, Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, air is starting to move. Like I said initially, I create that pressure drop and I move from a region which creates, a, a, which makes this an area of high pressure all of a sudden and it goes to a region of low pressure. So my fuel actually starts to climb up my emulsion tube. Because I've made this a high pressure area, I've got my vent for my emulsion tube so I can get air in there and actually cause an emulsion to occur of fuel and air because of the pressure differential, again, I can pull air from near atmospheric or atmospheric down my vent tube into the emulsion tube and cause this emulsion to finally occur, okay? All of this is happening really, really quick. As my emulsion comes up my emulsion tube, it goes out my, my transfer tube or booster tube, whatever you want to call it, and it feeds my booster. Now, many modern boosters are Venturi's themselves. So, oh my goodness, now what's going on? I got a Venturi within a Venturi, you know, EGAD. So it's like Venturi squared, I don't know. But what happens is now I've got, again, a pressure of, uh, or pardon me, a, a high pressure area where my annulus is on my booster. And then I'm gonna come into my bottleneck in my booster and I'm gonna have an area of low pressure. And then as I leave my booster, and move into the throttle bore region or the throttle bore venturi area, I'm going to come into another area of high pressure as I leave my booster region. So my emulsified air is hitting this rapid airstream, tra all of this traveling toward my intake valve. Um, and as it, as it leaves my booster, it's, the brakes are basically getting slammed on this emulsion as it hits, hits this oncoming air and, and, and goes from like 60 to zero, for an analogy, all that inertia, all that momentum says, hey, I'm just, I wanna keep going, but I'm not. So it shears, which causes greater atomization of my emulsion. And uh, that, that improved, uh, if I could use that terminology, if my improved emulsion, then my improved atomized emulsion, then continues down my throttle bore and then on toward my intake valve. For today, I think I'm gonna say that's good enough for the main circuit. Um, 
Dial in your jets as we talked about earlier. Remember the vacuum gauge is your friend if you're working with a carburetor. Uh, if you'd like to, please post your comments. Uh, sign up for a subscription. Yeah, pardon me, I'm running dry. Sign up for a subscription or uh, take a look at some of our additional videos here off to the side. Uh, thanks for watching another Summit Racing sponsored Quick Flicks.